Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Agents to Owners podcast. Uh, today, I'm excited to sit down with the owners of Richardson Insurance from Hanover, Massachusetts, Aaron and Mike Richardson. Uh, Richardsons, thank you very much for joining. Welcome to the show. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. We appreciate it. Yeah, happy to sit down with you guys and um, learn a little bit more about your operation. Um, I see you a little bit on social media and all the creative things that you do to um, engage with your community. And um, for those that have been around a little while, they know that community is your thing. And, and you guys are just all in on it, which is amazing. So we're looking forward to learning about that. But um, why don't we just give, if you could give us just a brief background of kind of your, your history and how you found your way into the insurance space. And you take this one. Okay. Um, I've been working in insurance for about 22 years. Um, I found my way there, just pure luck. I mean, Brad, <laughs> we all get into it, you know, um, by chance really. But, um, so I worked, I started working at a, um, carrier that was nearby where I was living at the time. And I cycled through the company, uh, in all the different departments worked in, you know, processing and I worked in claims and underwriting. And I got to really see all the different pieces, um, to the carrier side. And then, um, I joined Mike at the agency about seven years ago. We decided after we were married that we were going to, uh, you know, combine our, our efforts and do it together. So that's yeah. my story. Yeah. The agency, we're the fourth generation of the, yeah. the family agency, uh, started in 1930. Um, but we call ourselves the, a 90 year old startup. Uh, we don't want to be, we don't want to run like a 90 year old company. Uh, yeah. we, we love technology. We love enhancing the, the customer experience through technology. Yeah. Which is, I'm looking forward to getting into the evolution of that. So, um, at what point did Mike, did you say, we got, we have to start modernizing, modernizing things and doing things a little bit differently. So at what point did you start doing that? And then how did that go with, you know, the existing, Yeah. you know, was uh, it, was it your dad that you took it? Yeah. My dad had it before us. Um, okay. I was flipping houses in Boston, uh, right out of college. And I was in between projects and my mom asked me to, to come help out at the agency for a little bit while I was in between stuff. Uh, I'm still here now, uh, but to answer your question in terms of how long it took until I realized we needed to modernize things, I think it was about two hours um, when I saw how we were doing things <laughs> and being in my mid twenties, um, right. I knew there was change needed. Yeah. So where did you start? Where did you start with it? I mean, there, I'm sure it was like everything, but yeah. what kind of things ever did... worked in a, a family agency, you, you understand that pushback, uh, yeah. of the, the new regime versus the, the old guard. Uh, but for me, it started with scanning files. Uh, we had mm. paper, yeah. everything and file cabinets from wall to wall. So, uh, started there and switched to agency management systems, uh, went to a digital phone system and on and on and on. Uh, was there, uh, besides your father, was there existing staff at the time? There was. Um, so there was three other people here when I started, um, but very, it, it was a pretty stagnant agency. They were, they were trying to hold on to the business they had. Um, yep. there, there wasn't a real growth focus. How did that go with the existing staff? They just jump right on board and yeah, they were all, sure, yeah. Right? Uh, no, of course not. But, um, it was just one of those things that we kind of gradually took steps towards making sure everyone was, was up to speed and, and a couple of people didn't want to stay up to speed. Yeah. So they, they found their, their retirement, uh, not to our doing directly, but they just didn't want to play at that speed. Now, <clears throat> So were you, and I understand that you, at what phase were you at? Where did you, were you in a leadership role at this point? Were you the owner at this point? Yeah. So we, I wasn't the owner. Um, I, my dad still owned it for about eight years before Aaron and I bought it. Um, okay. so 
he still ultimately made the decisions, but he was yeah. pretty good about, about giving me some, some leeway to make some decisions that he didn't necessarily see the vision for, but trusted me. Okay. So, so talk a little bit about the, um, the transition from act actually purchasing. How did that, was that, did that go fairly smoothly? Because you hear kind of all over the board where it's not easy. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. How did, how did that work? For in you our guys? case, it actually was, was pretty smooth by that, yeah. by this point, Aaron was in here. Uh, we were running the show, um, and he still was the, the owner on paper, but he got to the point that he was ready to retire and, and we made an offer to, to buy the agency and it went from there. He okay. could see, cause he was still here every day and he could see the progress that was being made in the agency. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think he felt comfortable, you know, at that point. Um, knowing that we were going to take good care of it. Yeah. Yeah. And probably, I think in most cases, at least from, you know, talking to so many people, they know that change needs to be made. You know, they see these things that maybe we don't, I still giggle when I hear the word fax, <laughs> you know, from a mortgage company and, yeah. and, and, um, which I mean, that was being phased out. I don't know. That was a long time ago, but so they know, but, change is hard right adapting but I, I in my in my experience um you know i had something similar basically took i wasn't a part of the family when i took over um but it was uh, an agency with a staff that had been around for a long time mm -hmm. same thing we had i don't i don't know how many file cabinets and i sold them on i remember selling them all on craigslist Somebody like, wanted them? we had a party yeah <laughs> i mean yes they probably junked them but um but it was and just it like freed up oh, the yeah. whole office. Yeah. Not so, even physically, but just the the mental space that that yeah. provides. Yeah. So, but the the change of this of um you know changing base to the staff was that was that was hard. Yeah. And um because you know, we ch ch I did the same thing change management systems, mm -hmm. um and and I think foolishly I changed too many things at one time instead of doing it maybe a little more incrementally yep. so um but you know you do it and i was like i'm just i know it's gonna be hard we're just gonna rip the band-aid off yep. and do it and we're, when we're all gonna learn together it's gonna be great and yeah. it, <laughs> it wasn't as great but we got through it um so talk about some of the ways um you know you you like to have a modernized way of doing business what are some of those uh ways that you uh, have you know um enhanced your business with your tech yeah and yeah yeah so I, I wouldn't say that we're on the cutting edge of the yeah. ai stuff and all that but we right. we love streamlining the business right so the, the client experience we're very personalized focused because we love how that flows through our our process uh between the onboarding process to the quoting process and it's all just designed to be as smooth as possible for the client um and I mean, even claims and, and all of that stuff, we've just built touch points throughout our, our process that just make all of that flow smooth with the team that we have here. Uh, we're not the people that love that really difficult risk and figuring out how to like, yeah. give me the, the home and auto all day. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so talk about how that process works. Um, and I don't know, well, let's touch on this. What, what kind of, what roles are you guys handling within the agency? You can leave that. Okay. Um, so when we started working together, um, it was a little bit of a learning curve as you would expect, mm -hmm. um, because you don't, you have the dynamic of the partnership, but also husband and wife. So yeah. that's always fun. We get a lot. I could never do that. Yeah. Um, so we, we had that at the beginning in terms of I, she was coming into my agency. Um, and then that kind of dynamic changed as I obviously saw what she brought to the agency with her insurance yeah. background, but, um, the, uh, it, it works well now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about that a little bit. As long as we're on that, I, I just, um, I imagine it would be difficult and it helps because Aaron had such a lengthy history with insurance and in, and in all aspects, uh, claims underwriting. I mean, so really a wealth of knowledge coming in. So it's not like she was, a graphic designer. Right. Um, yeah. My wife's a graphic designer. That's just <laughs> how it came in, you know. <laughs> but, um, Aaron, what was that like for you? Because as he, 
I mean, I heard the words come out of his mouth. He, you know, this was my agency. Mm -hmm. And, and so how, how, how was that for you coming into that and working yourself into the fold that way? Um, it was interesting. Um, obviously I came from a very corporate background mm -hmm. and then, you know, as agency owners, you guys know that that structure is very different. Um, so there was a, you know, there was a period of time that it took some adjustment and it took some time for me to find my footing and my place in the agency. Like, what is my role here going to be? You know, um, we still had the existing staff. We still had my stat around. So, um, you know, it took a little bit, but what we quickly figured out is that we needed to, um, draw a line and really delegate who was going to handle what so that at mo you know we so that we could do our very best not to kind of step on each other's toes and be handling a lot of the same things so we tried to get like really definitive about what his role was going to be what my role was going to be and that helped a lot i learned quickly that she knew a hell of a lot more than i did uh, so it wasn't it wasn't a thing where i could like debate her she just her wealth of knowledge and, and the way that she conducted herself coming from that experience, uh, it quickly became a partnership. Yeah. So what kind of roles did you, what, what, what did you define between the two of you? Um, I mean, obviously that's grown as our team has grown and our yep. agency has grown, but um, I'm more, you know, I handle more of the personal line side. I handle the people, uh, HR type roles um, and team culture. And he handles, the commercial aspect of our business. He handles all of our systems and our tech, mm -hmm. and he primarily handles, um, you know, referral partner relationships and nurturing those. Um, so we have a really good divide. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds, I mean, and is Aaron, would you say that's <clears throat> more with your, your skill set and something you're comfortable in? Because what I hear, like, I would absolutely love to have somebody, you know, take over those roles. I mean, and so is, is that kind of fit for you guys? And, and probably that was probably huge for, for Mike in securing that, those roles in the agency. Yes, because Mike had never worked for anybody else. He's only been his own boss. So I've gone through the, you know, working for yes. other people interviewing, hiring, firing. I, you know, I've ha I have background to that yeah. that he wasn't necessarily coming in with. So it did work. Yeah. I'm much more of the, the visionary type role. Um, so if I was left to lead the team by myself, it would be an absolute nightmare. So Eric, before you came on, was there any, you know, written processes and like you said, for structured a hiring or anything like that, you're shaking your head. I was the same way. So until I, Took me a long time to figure it out. So where you were like, oh my God, I gotta fix this. <laughs> this is uh amazing. no, I just built it as we went. It okay. was like, okay, now it's time for us to hire our next person. This is how we're gonna do this. Yeah. So it wasn't a panic moment by any means. Yeah. It was like, okay, we're gonna build this together because truly it was a complete revamp of what the business was to what we were turning it into. Yeah. What would you say the biggest challenges have been working with your spouse? Turning it off. Yeah. Um, it, it comes home with us more than we yeah. like it to. Um, we do Thursday date night where insurance isn't talked about. Yeah. Uh, it's on the calendar every week. Uh, but other than that, I mean, between after work events and different things that we're involved in, uh, that's the hardest part for yeah. us is, is come thinking of something that happened throughout the day versus somebody else that's talking about their day with their spouse. Like we're talking about our business. Yeah. And we try to remind ourselves, like every husband and wife goes home and talks about their day to each other. Right. Yeah. It just so happens that ours is a lot of the same. <laughs> um, so it can be a lot of the same conversation. Um, in the beginning, I was under the very wrong impression that we would be able to just go home and turn it off. And that's just not reality. Yeah. Um, so I had to quickly realize that. And then he had to quickly realize it's just not something that we should talk about 24 hours a day, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, I have this idea. Yeah. But he, he loves to, you know? <laughs> so yeah. coming up with those boundaries and just having those conversations of like, hey, listen, 
time and a place. And we just need like these few hours on this particular night where we're just like not that's that can't be our focus. You know, let's focus on something else. Yeah, that that's what I would have guessed would would have been a, to not be able to shut it off at five o'clock. Yeah. Yeah, that that would that would be really hard. What are, what are the benefits? I'm sure there's a ton of benefits of working together. There are. I mean, we talk the same language. I don't know. I mean, I imagine there's a lot of couples out there that go home and talk about their jobs and you have no idea what they're talking about because you're yeah. not in their day to day or, you know, speak their language or, you know, all the abbreviations that us insurance people have and only we understand. Um, yeah. So that's nice. You, you know, we'll talk in front of our son and he'll be like, what are you guys saying? <laughs> like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Um, but then also the the flexibility too. I mean, I would say coming from corporate to working at the agency, I personally felt less flexibility as an as a business owner, right? Yeah. That's given. Um, but the flexibility in our marriage of like the understanding of like give and take too. Yeah. When it comes to our daughter, when it comes to other activities or meetings or any of that kind of stuff. No, yeah, I, love be... the, I love the piece where we get to build something together. Yeah. Um, it's it's ours and not siloed jobs. Yeah, that makes it special. That that was the one thing I kind of thought of. That would be really be special because it is. I look at like that too. Is is that um, you know I'm building something, yeah. and it's and it's mine. So to be able to do that do that together would be special. I I would think. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's let's get back to um, how you en enhance your customer experience. Um, let's let's say you guys. I mean, I think you guys are basically referral only, or I mean, incoming calls only, right? You don't do any outbound. You know, all inbound leads. Yeah, yeah, all inbound. So, someone contacts your agency. What does that look like from a sales process? Um, do you you have dedicated salespeople? And what kind of systems do you use for that process? Can we lead the way there? Sure. All right. Uh, so we're, we're big on human experience, right? So yeah. we wanted to build the agency that we would want to do business with. Uh, I'm one that like immediately gets frustrated by phone trees and, and any of that stuff. So somebody live answers the phone. Most of what we get nowadays is a warm email intro, but um, inbound opportunity we're able to find especially if the house is listed we're able to find all that information so we're asking about five questions yeah. setting out a canopy connect link connecting that so that we're able to get current deck pages we have a custom proposal that we're sending them following up with a text and a phone call just to see if they have any questions closing that obviously e-sign docusign then they're getting kicked into our automated um, onboarding process, which is specific to them based on tags that we've identified for life insurance, or if they have a dog or just different things that we've identified as touch points that make it specific to them. Um, but in terms of like overall tech side of it, we just want to streamline it as much as possible while still making it feel human and connected to our agency. Our retention's really good um, because we're not transactional. Yeah, and you, I mean, you do some really personalized things too, right? I mean, I mean, just kind of you touched on the tags, but don't you do things that are very specific? Yeah. So the, um, the book "Unreasonable Hospitality" is is one of our favorites, um, and the idea there is just finding individual touch points for people that don't have to be done doing things that don't scale. Um, so if we hear somebody just broke their arm or something, we'll send them some cookies. Or if they got a brand new car, we'll send them a car wash certificate. Or if they talk about certain things on the phone or, or identifying those different touch points, um, we talk about listen carefully, respond creatively. Um, so we're just trying to find those certain things that drive those relationships deeper. But that's the stuff we love, right? So when our team gets the phone call back and like, wow, I just got what you sent out. This is amazing. You guys are the best. That person's going to refer us. They're going to renew with us. Yeah. And that call to us feeds our team. Have you noticed, um, you know, an uptick in incoming calls? I mean, I, I think, you know, people are probably shopping at an all-time high right now. Um, so have you noticed that sort of thing kind of start to pay off? Or because I'd imagine 
you guys really, really have a, a strong name recognition in your community. I mean, you're, I, I have to imagine you're everywhere and the, the, you know, the gestures of goodwill that you provide and, and being out there is, you know, people notice that stuff. So is, as do you feel like that's come back? Absolutely. Um, yeah. the, the goodwill compounds faster than almost anything else that we do. Uh, but it's stuff that we love to do. That's stuff that yeah. like makes us feel good. So it's not even just a marketing plan. Uh, it's just part of making all of this easier for everyone. Right. So we get nicer phone calls, we get more retention all of that stuff helps, but it just makes us feel good to do it. And we love doing it. Yeah. And with that, from the outside looking in, you know, you, you, you treat your team, you know, like that too. And you do just spe specialized, creative, thoughtful things for your team. Uh, can you touch on some of the ways that, that you guys have been intentional about taking care of and kind of loving on your own team? Um, yes. Um, I mean, most important thing for us is to keep those people happy. Um, yeah. You know, they are the heartbeat of our agency um, and they mean a lot to us. So just making sure that they don't feel the burnout um, and making sure that we are, you know, treating them well and, you know, responding to the ways that motivate them and letting them know, you know, treating them like family and letting them know how much yeah. we care about them. Yeah, we have the standard KPIs and things that everybody has, but we try to do the same thing where we're listening carefully to what they're saying and responding creatively. So whether they mention a concert that they want to go to that we have access to to get pre-sale tickets or just those types of things. We also do what's called culture cash. So we try to catch people doing the things right versus mm. Uh, catching them doing things wrong. So we'll go like give them $50 on the spot just because they're doing something that went above and beyond with a client or we're patient in a situation that may have been hard to be patient in. Wow. Um, so we're just trying to find ways to, to recognize them and surprise them. Uh, culture cash. That's, that's outstanding. <laughs> I mean, how, how powerful, I mean, and for the rest of the group, right? I mean, we were just yeah. talking you know, I, I thought I was had some good ideas by just giving some shout outs in our regular meetings and talking about team win, wins and creating some positivity, but that's, that's, that's impactful. Um, yeah, that's, that's huge. Yeah. We do an annual rock, paper, scissors tournament oh, yeah. where we try to get everybody engaged and, and we have a really competitive team, so no one likes to lose. Um, and then this year we did a putting contest before the masters. Um, what else have we done? Aaron did a, a baseball contest, uh, where it was insurance related metrics, but each week they'd earn runs, uh, and we'd give out gift cards to the, the person that had the most runs. And so just trying to find creative ways to keep everybody engaged and make sure that they understand, we recognize how hard they're working right now. What type of, uh, what type of, uh, KPIs do you, do you measure? Uh, depends on the position. Um, yeah. but I mean, mostly profit producing things that they, that can be done in that particular role. Um, so, and I have them give me their input too. Yeah. So what are the things that we're going to focus on for the next quarter? You know, let's come up with that metric and yeah, it's the Google review stuff and identifying yeah. cross sell opportunities and, um, upselling or rounding out coverage, just those types of, yeah. That's exactly, exactly yeah. what we're doing. And, um, and we'll do, so what, what we'll do is we, we run it by a quarter and then we have, if we meet our goals by the, by the end of the quarter, you know, then we'll have some rewards and the favorite of the group is a rotating half day off on Friday Perfect. and, um, and a team party. And so next, in fact, it's next week we're doing a, um, a painting party. Oh, fun. Yeah. And so we have a couple of remotes, so everybody's gonna be involved and I'm really looking forward to it, but I'm, I'm, I know that I'm going to be the worst at it. So I've been, <laughs> know that. Oh, I know that. <laughs> but it's going to be so fun. That's so, uh, so yeah, I, I, th I just think this stuff goes a long way. And as we've been, you know, discussing it and actually I, we mentioned, we talked a little bit before we jumped on about, um, what, 
hiring and I've recently went to um, having a staff interview and I never really did that before. And, and, and so I, you know, would record those. I wasn't involved, but I record them and I couldn't believe the nice things that they were saying. And they came back to this, you know, developing some camaraderie by playing these games and working together. And I'm like, Oh my God, this stuff's working. Of course, yeah. it's amazing. Um, uh, the rock, paper, scissors. That's great. And I think what's, what's, um, what I got from some of those, um, um, team interviews or just doing some hiring is that, uh, those are heck of, those are great hiring tools because yeah. Yeah. people that research, you see that. So that's what's coming up now in um, our last kind of blast out that we were looking for our next team member. We got people that are reaching out saying, I think that your values align with my values just based on what I can see from you and your team. You know, it looks like a great place to work. And so we get people that respond to that going, you know, those are the people, you know? Yeah. And for you guys, it's sincere, right? And so, um, I'm not, not that, not that others aren't. Um, and I just that, that you put it out there and the value that it has to it and, and, and for your own, you know, customer base that sees that, that these are real people and that treat their people. Well, I think it's, it's huge. So I love what you guys are doing. Um, I think it's now how much of your time is spent in the community and going to these events because it seems like you're very active. You got a lot going on. Erin's the president of the Chamber of Commerce, so she does <laughs> a lot with that. Yeah. Um, but as an agency, we have like four pillar events a year. Um, so we're not at something different every night. We're not all over the place that way. Yeah. Um, but we do put a lot of energy and focus into the things that, that mean a lot to us. Well, typically, uh, you know, a chair that the president of the chamber of commerce i mean there's there, there's some expectations set for that right they typically want you to be at a lot if you can't you can as i suppose if you set your expectations i was heavily involved in our chamber of commerce and i i was asked to take that role and i declined just yeah. because i knew that i wasn't going to jump in with both feet yeah. and or be able to or i was going to be too pulled in too many directions and so i i, I didn't take it but yeah, it's a big time commitment. There's a lot of expectation, I think, mostly from myself to make yeah. sure that it runs well. And the biggest thing with the chamber, with the agency is just how can we provide the most value? So, you know, that carries over into the chamber, too. Like, how can we provide the most value to our membership and trying to just be creative in ways to do that um, and give back there? But it's the same approach that we take with the agency. How can we provide the most value to our clients? How can we provide the most value to our team? Um, it's just that underlying theme in our lives of like, if we're going to show up, we want to make sure we show up well. Right. Right. Um, what, what sort of things would you like to see improved upon in, in your agency? That's a good question. Yeah. Uh, I mean, as with any agency, there's a lot of things every day yeah. that we feel like we could make better. Um, in terms of big goals. Uh, we've, we've done a lot to like tweak the little things that, that bothered us. Um, we probably need another person or two in order to really execute on the service level that we want to yeah. be at. Uh, I think we, I think we do a great job now, but as we continue to write new business and um, that's, that's something that I get concerned about um, because I think we lead with service and uh, I think nowadays, especially with burnout and mergers and acquisitions, and yeah. um, it, it plays to our benefit to be the one that, that answers the phone. Yeah. Um, what do you guys do? What do you feel like you do really well? Human connection. Um, yeah. Whether it's with our clients or, or how we show up online, uh, we just want people to feel like they're part of what we're building here. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'd say you're nailing that. I mean, that certainly, I mean, it looks, it certainly looks like it. So, um, I've, I mentioned, um, one of the other pieces that you're doing, and it seems like you guys, like I said, you're creative and you find a lot of different ways and I'm not sure how long you've been doing it, but I've been 
watching a little bit is your is your two minute drill. Is there kind of what's what's your I what you think is outstanding? <laughs> and I've just been thinking as I was just at this uh, this large kind of city business council meeting recently, and I I was kind of thinking of doing something along those lines. I don't know if it was a podcast, but just just highlighting businesses yeah. and you know and maybe some city officials and because I don't think. I don't think that's being done mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so w- is there a strategy behind the two minute drill? I mean, it, it promotes, you know, I, the last one I saw was of a realtor yep. and they're just, yeah. it's just fun. And yeah. So yeah. what's, what's the thought behind that? So we started doing it because we were advertising with one of the real producers magazines. Uh, so we were highlighting the people in the magazine. Uh, it's a nationwide magazine, basically around real estate. Uh, so we, we had an ad in there and we were just looking for ways to connect with those people differently. That relationship changed and we weren't using that. We weren't using that partnership anymore. So we started doing it from the agency. But again, following the lines of human connection, it just allows them to create a, a deeper connection with their audience. Yeah. Um, so they're sharing it out to their pages and people are, are laughing and they're, they're saying, wow, I remember that car or um, that's my favorite band too. Um, so just the little things we, we were looking for a way to highlight them in a different yep. way than a long form conversation. Yeah. It also scratches a little bit of a creative itch for me where I get to edit it and, and put it all together. So yeah. Yeah. You get some, you put some fun graphics next to it and, yeah. uh, which by the way, in your camera quality is outstanding. What kind of camera do you have? <laughs> uh, that's an R6 Mark II Canon. Okay. Yeah, yeah it is. Um, I mean, it's like I'm in the room with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the goal, Brad. I'm guessing you like your tech, right? I mean, do you have to have the latest and greatest for that sort of thing typically? or? Yeah, I mean, that camera is not like the top of the top of the line, but it's a nice quality camera. And I, I like that stuff. I like playing around with that stuff. We've done some other uh, videos with the agency and, and some of the stuff that Aaron and I have done personally. But uh, I, I enjoy that. It's kind of my creative escape from the the day-to-day of the business. Yeah. Last thing I have for you guys. Um, you are also, in addition to all these things, you're, you're also involved in two, I think a few different charitable organizations. Can you talk about uh, some of those that you're involved in? Cause you guys don't just send money in. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, you're in, which I, which I love. And I mean, and at the forefront of it, and it's very, it's very admirable. So, yeah, we, we are very intentional about that. Um, and we are um, heavily tied to a couple of charities that are really meaningful to us. Uh, one of them is School on Wheels of Massachusetts. Um, they are an organization in our state that provide um, supplies and tutoring and different things to homeless children um, in our state around us. So uh, we do a, an annual backpack drive for them every year. Throughout the month of August, we collect as many backpacks as we can. We started this six years ago or so. Um, the number to beat this year is 608 backpacks. Wow. So it always, wow. every year we, we, we try to get more than the year before. So it started with a goal of 50. Yeah, 50. And we got over 100. And so every year we've just been building and building. And so it's amazing. And we, we love doing it. Um, but the program that we, we raise awareness for is, is awesome too. So we do that. Um, and then another one is, um, Tommy's place. I'll let Mike speak to that one. Yeah. So Tommy's place is a vacation home for kids battling cancer and their families. So they get a free week vacation. Uh, it's down the Cape. Um, the guy that put it all together is amazing. Uh, so we wanted to do anything we could to support him. Uh, we do a bowling tournament with some of our partners every year. And so we use that to kind of generate some money for them and then also support our partners' charities. Uh, and then last summer, uh, I was looking for a creative way to uh, to raise some money for them. So I decided to run from their location in Falmouth, Mass, back to our office, which was 55 miles. Uh, it raised just short of 20 grand. Wow. And I asked how long that took you and I'm going to guess it because I know it was, tell me again, was it like eight <laughs> hours? It was about 11, but 11. Um, I had some people meet me along the way. So we made a day of it. 
uh, it wasn't a, a straight sprint home. Um, yeah, just trying to do the math. Um, that's so a lot. The, <laughs> his goal was to do it under 12 hours. Yeah. He, he hit his goal. Um, 20,000. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what's, what's the name of this Tommy's place and what's, what's the link for that? Because that's something, I think that's when I, you first actually caught my eye was I, I saw your connection to that and I was, yeah. I was so moved I by it. I appreciate your donation to it. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. I think that was, uh, well, thank you for your work. That's, that's, in, that's incredible. Um, what is the link to Tommy's place? I think it's tommysplace.org. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, that's okay. I'll look it up. Yeah. And what's yeah. the link to your what's the link to your backpack? Now, how does that work? Does that just anybody in your community can donate, or you guys are out soliciting? <laughs> yeah, we we've, we've actually opened it up to to allow for any kind of donation. So okay. you can drop at our office. You can have Amazon deliver it to us. You can Venmo us money. We'll buy the backpacks on your behalf. And then okay. in the last couple of years, we've hosted an ice cream night. So we go to our ice cream, local ice cream shop. And anybody that comes with a backpack gets free ice cream for your, you and your family. So it's another opportunity for people to bring bags. And we get to hang out with people in our community. Okay. And is that on your, is there, is there a, a, like a link to on your site? Or where can people get involved for the backpack? We restart it every year. Yeah. So uh, we'll start pushing it out, you know, end of June, early July, and then we collect through the end of August. So. Oh, so you do all that in just a couple months. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. And let me ask this. So, um, so you have a, uh, a son and a daughter. Do, do you, and I know your daughter's younger, right? Maybe. Mm -hmm. She's seven. Yeah, she's first seven. Grade. Okay. Yeah. So does she get involved in that sort of thing? I bet, I bet it's a lot of fun for her. Oh yeah. Or maybe not. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. She's all over it. So we have a big day where, you know, we take all of the backpacks from our office. We load them into our cars. We drive them over to where we're bringing them. We load them with some supplies and we have all of our kiddos who want to be a part of that help with all that manual labor of, of lugging all those hundreds and hundreds of backpacks and, yeah, but it's great. They love it. No. And, and of course they love the ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. Win-win. Yeah. Um, and your son is deployed, right? Or he was deployed? Is he that... was deployed, yeah. Okay. He, oh, back. he was at Camp Pendleton and Quantico. Um, he's in Virginia currently, so. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, you guys are amazing. Um. <laughs> I mean, really, it's really impressive all the stuff that you're you're involved in. Uh, thanks very much for joining me today and uh, sharing sharing so much. Um, if anyone wants to get a hold of you guys, what's the best place to to find you guys? You want me to give them your cell phone number? <laughs> yeah, cell. Give the, give Mike cell. <laughs> uh, email. I mean, social media is we're all over Facebook and Instagram. I still haven't figured out TikTok. Um, yeah. But my email is Mike at insurewithrichardson.com and, and she's Erin at insurewithrichardson.com. Okay. Well, thanks again for being here. I greatly appreciate it. Everyone else, thank you for joining another episode of the Agents to Owners podcast. We'll see you next week.